Hey guys, it's Ryder here with another Heroes Reborn review. Heroes Reborn, the fall finale, episode 10, 1153 to Odessa. So, uh, let's just start with this. I have seen a lot of reviews and a lot of articles saying that this is one of the most underwhelming episodes of Heroes that we've seen. Uh, especially underwhelming for a fall finale. Now, here's my response to that. Um, first of all, I agree this may not have been the best episode of the season. I'm not going to agree with the fact that it was underwhelming, um, and here's why. When they filmed Here as Reborn, I don't think they really intended, hey, episode 10 is going to be our mid-season finale. No, because if they wanted to do that, they would have had, you know, episode 8 be their mid-season finale. Um, you know, have you be anticipating, hey, what happens after June 13th, part 2? That's, I mean, that would have made more sense to me. I think episode 10 was just another episode. Uh, and of course, it did have some big things going on. Which we're gonna we're gonna definitely talk about, but really, I think this was just supposed to be more of another episode, and I did enjoy it. I really did. Um, I think that we got a bit more of you know the, some of the main plot ideas. Here's my only complaint, um, and it's it's about Erica. Now, I like I like what they were trying to do with what they are trying to do with the Erica character, and of course, we really don't know her final final plan. We learned a lot more about what she wants to do, but we didn't learn her, truly what she wants to do if that makes sense. I just think that they did two things wrong with her character. Number 1, I think they casted wrong. Um, and number 2, I think they made a mistake not having her have powers. Now, Let's talk about the casting. I actually very much like the actress who is playing Erica, and I think she works well with the character that they've built. But I think what sh what her character should have been a bit more of is kind of like an Arthur Petrelli. Arthur Petrelli, he was like, he was just a regular dude, you know? He was in a suit and everything, but there was something about him that made you fear him. Like, he was creepy. Same with Siler, you know, even at the end, even in the season four finale, right? When he's like, I don't want to be bad anymore. I'm a hero. And you know Siler's good. You know that he's a good guy now. But there's still something about him that makes you fear him, right? Right, you're right. It's almost like when you have the Joker in custody. When you know the Joker's in custody, he can't hurt you. But. He's still the Joker. He's still feared. So I think that that's kind of what happened. Um, Erica, on the other hand, I don't exactly fear her. I think that they're trying to make her creepy, but I just don't think that that actress does creepy well. So honestly, I think that's somewhat of an issue. Other part, powers. I really wish she would have had, like, mind control. Not, well, we've seen mind control before, but maybe something more like... Uh, persuasion or something like that or she has some luck or she has some she I wish she had a power you know maybe she does have powers we don't know yet I don't exactly understand her final plan uh, she keeps saying she wants she it seems like she wants to save the human race too by skipping over this apocalypse but hey didn't she create the apocalypse I thought her plan was to just tra tele transport people without powers to this uh, gateway, um, save them from the Healy, and just let the Evos die. That would have made more sense, but it seems like she wants to bring everyone there. Or, you know, you have uh, her having, if we could find out that she does have powers, and then maybe she only wants to bring the people who have Evo powers to this gateway place. I'm not sure. Um, and I think that's really my only complaint. I, I like this whole idea of the Healy, but I'm not understanding where Erica wants to stand. And, you know, we actually kind of learned from the beginning in the in Hero Season 1 what Siler wanted. He was just a homicidal, you know, killer, right? He was a serial killer. I mean, that was bottom line, and it, it made sense. And even once we started getting to, you know, more depth into the season, we learned more about him and everything. But we learned that he's trying to steal these people's powers. For what? Well, we don't exactly know why. We just know that he's a killer and he wants these people's powers. Well, Erica, we, we get it. She wants to teleport to people, trans transport people to this other place. 
to this gateway into the future. But you don't exactly know, is that it? Like, that's the only thing. I don't think we've... I mean, I think they need a whole episode to explain Erica's past. And I think they need a whole episode to go into depth about what she wants to do. Um, and how Matt Parkman's connected, how he got connected, how Mohinder got connected, how Angela Petrelli got connected, who is Erica related to. I just don't think we know enough about her. Uh, and I think that's good, but at the same time, not so good. Um... So that was kind of like my big thing with Erica, but other than that, I really enjoyed what we saw. Carlos, I mean, this was probably his best episode. I gotta admit, you know, he is probably the most underwhelming character in the series. And I kind of wanted to like him a lot, but I like how they've connected him to Matt Parkman and, of course, Farah. Now, I think that's Farah is the part that connects Carlos to the rest of everything else. Um... And I gotta be honest, I really, really felt like this episode was a Heroes episode, not a Heroes Reborn, if that makes sense. I felt like this could have stood next to uh, some of the original season's episodes. Uh, of course, like I said, it was probably not, it wasn't a bad episode, it definitely wasn't, I very much enjoyed it. But it wasn't probably the strongest, um, and like I said, I just don't think it was, I don't think this was the episode they were intending for to be the mid-season finale, um, but I really liked what they were trying to do with Tommy and Nathan, um, and I'm really, I gotta be honest, Miko and Ren are probably one of my favorite storylines. I absolutely love that those two characters. I think out of all the characters in the show, I'd say her, of course, Tommy and Melina, and Ren, they probably fit the best with the original line above heroes. I have no clue why, but I absolutely love those characters. Love them. I'm a really big fan of Tommy, and I'm a really big fan of Miko. I like Melina too, but I don't think we've had enough character development with her. And we'll be talking about all of them in just a minute. Uh, but I just, I'm really, I like how they're connecting everyone. I really do. I like how, well, I, I'll talk about that later, but Hachiro, Otomo, and Ren, and the Godsend, and the Healy, and the Future, and who the hell took Noah Bennett? I mean, honestly, my guess is it's Tommy, but, I mean, you can always keep your, you can always hope that you will maybe see Peter or something like that. Of course, it's going to be, it was Tommy who most likely teleported Nate, uh, Noah Bennett out of there, but, you know, it's always fun to kind of wonder, hey, what about Peter, you know? Uh, where is Peter? Um, I really felt like uh, Erica resembled a lot of Nathan Petrelli also, if that makes sense. More Nathan Petrelli from season three. Uh, I, I don't know if she's truly all bad, you know, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, th and I think if they wanted a f more flat-out villain, they should have gone with somebody more like Arthur Petrelli or maybe Linderman or, you know, I I think that would have been a bit more uh, interesting for, and you know, scary of a villain. Uh, you know, I just... And then how Matt Parkman's now connected, I, I just don't know about that. But uh, I, I don't know, I... I think that Erica somewhat does want to save people, which is kind of weird, but at the same time, she does. Um, and I think Nathan Petrilli was the same way. You know, he wanted to save people, but he wanted he went to extreme measures to do so. But from there, really, we just kind of go deeper into the backstory. Matt Parkman can't kind of get into Farah's mind just because Farah uh, is, is like this roadblock up, but... Uh, she's, you know, Matt Parkman's about to shoot Carlos in the, in the head, and Farrah's like, don't, and everything. Basically, to make a long story short, um, Matt Parkman's called out by, uh, a fake version of Erica Kravid. Um, there's actually a shapeshifter who is with Taylor Kravid, who they're trying to infiltrate, uh, Sunstone Manor to break up Micah Sanders. Now, we actually get to see Micah. Man, was it awesome to see Micah. It's been way too long. He's such a fun character. It is a shame that we are not seeing more of him. Hopefully, we'll get to see a lot of him in the final three episodes. I mean, we know he's Hero Truther. I think, I mean, one of the coolest reveals, you know, was even before Heroes Reborn started, and that was that this Hero Truther guy was actually Micah. I mean, when I first saw the Hero Truther, I'm like, oh, it's probably just some random dude, but when they revealed it at the end that, that's, that he's just another one of the hunted and Micah... So cool, you know, and that's what really got me hyped. 
Uh, and, it, you know, I, I'm happy that Micah was utilized there. But, like, I want to see him, you know, fully utilized now. Um, so he is, like, basically the source, it seems like, of Sunstone Manor. Uh, he's got all the records and everything, so he checks the list for Matt Parkman because Matt Parkman reads Harris Prime's mind, and Harris Prime is saying that he, Matt Parkman basically means nothing. Uh, so uh, we'll have to see, but Matt Parkman could, you know, go AWOL and turn against Erica, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So uh, he's going to Gateway. He's sure of that now. Uh, but, you know, they're trying to get to Micah because Micah's the leader. The Haitian's there. It's also really cool to see the Haitian. But basically, we have Carlos, we have Farrell, you've got Taylor, uh, the Haitian, and a bunch of other hero truthers, and they're running for about 50 billion Harris Primes. Not literally. There's probably about, you know, a couple hundred Harris Primes, but they're all coming to, to get them, and that's how we end the episode. Um, I know I kind of went, skipped right to the end, but... Let's just kind of talk about uh, another big storyline that was going on. Noah Bennett, Melina, Luke. So, uh, from there, what we, 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 have, we had Melina and Noah reuniting last week. Uh, and that was right after, you know, the, the, Melina was kind of caught up in the whole incident with Joanne and Luke and everybody. Um, so, you know, Melina is now with her grandfather. And that, that's where we have it. We have that. That's what's going on. Uh, so they're about to go on the road. They're going to go look for Tommy. So you have now Luke asking to join with them and kind of go along with them. And Noah Bennett's like, we don't want your help. Uh, I appreciate you, do, well, you doing what you did, but we don't need your help. So he follows them in a car, and he gets to the point where there's this big storm, um, an effect of the Healy and Melina, of course, her environmental powers. She can basically do absolutely anything with her powers, which is really awesome. Uh, so she is able to stop it. She's working on stopping it, but like everybody's like either getting hurt or they're just parked, parking their cars in the middle of the uh, highway just because they can't go anywhere. So she's stopping them. She actually stops it and everything. But this, the, this effect of the Healy, it's, it's going, I mean, it's wrecking everything. It's really, and Noah Bennett, you know, the car gets flipped or something like that, and it's just really hard. And Noah's like, you know, Melina, be careful. And somebody teleports uh, Noah Benton away. And it sounded like the same sound effect when Tommy tele you know, uses his power to make things disappear where he can you know, transport himself. And of course, we now know he can go into the future and stuff. Uh, so we, it looks like it's him that's taken him, that's, that's you know, t teleported Noah Bennett away. But the bottom line here is that we don't know who the hell teleported Noah Bennett away. For all we know, it could have been somebody like Peter Petrelli. It could have been. But why the hell would Peter Petrelli show up just randomly out of the blue and find Noah Bennett and be like, Hey, I see there's this big storm going on. I see that that's my niece over there, or my, my great niece over there, saving everybody. There's some random dude with fire powers, and then there's Noah Bennett. What do I do? Do I just go ahead and teleport him away? Huh. The world doesn't even know where I am. What the hell I'm doing? How about Siler? No one knows what we're doing. But I should just show up now and teleport Noah Bennett away? Guys, it doesn't make sense. I've read a lot of places that people are speculating it could be him. It could be some other returning hero. There's not any other hero that can teleport. It has to be Tommy. And if it's not Tommy, then they're going to, there'll be some big reveal. And it's going to, they'll explain, but it gets to the point where it's like, how could Hiro Nakamura do that? How could have he come back in time? He doesn't have his power anymore. It just, it, there's no possible way it could add up unless, unless you've got Hiro Nakamura from the past come into the future and do that. But like, hey, once again, how does that make sense? So I think it's very safe to assume that there's a 90% chance that it was Tommy who came and teleported Noah Bennett away. Uh, I think that he recognizes that he can never touch Molina. So maybe that's why he didn't, you know, get Molina out of there as well. Um, plus, he doesn't really know Molina. Uh, I mean, do we even know if he knows he has a twin sister? It gets to a point like that. I mean, he did, but then his memory got wiped. So, like, we don't know. Even though Noah Bent filled him in on a bunch of that stuff, we still don't know what he really knows. Uh, and that's the part where it gets to be fun. 
Uh, but I, I'm a little confused with Tommy's character. I'm a little confused of what he's kind of doing as well. I don't know what the final battle is going to look like at this point. Uh, it's too... It's too far away to actually speculate, and that's sad, you know, that I can't speculate what the final battle could look like, but I kind of like that as well, because it's just they're going to keep pulling trick cards everywhere. Um, so at the end, Melina just thinks Noah Bennett's dead because he finds her gl he finds his glasses, and Hit Luke kind of gets Melina out of there. So now they're on the run again together, but... Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a hell of a ride. I'm very excited to see what happens, but uh, it's just all a little bit crazy. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click your like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you guys thought about the fall finale. I know it might not have been the best episode this season, but it sure as hell wasn't the worst. Also, I wanted to, I'm wanted. i doing something soon. We got to get this thing renewed for a season two. I am sorry. I will not watch this show end. I won't. I have no clue what you guys are thinking. I know there's a lot of people who wouldn't mind seeing this just go away. I will not let it happen. So here's what I'm gonna here's what I'm telling you guys. I know this video is really long already. I, I'm surprised if you actually stayed this far to actually listen to me talk for like a half hour. I'm so sorry I've made you sit here for a while. I know it gets annoying. You've got better things to do. Go watch Jessica Jones. My point here is I want... NBC, I want the creators of Heroes, I want everybody to know that it's not just me who loves this show. It's not just me who, does, who wants to see this legacy go on. So, let's say, I know, I know from the comments there are about 10 of you, maybe even more, who absolutely, they, you guys comment on every single one of my Heroes videos, and I'm so grateful that you actually watch them. I mean, I'm so grateful, right? You guys have an opinion, and I want your opinion on my videos. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to ask you, send in some re voice recordings or some videos of you guys just saying why you want this renewed. I'm going to put it all together in one big video, and we're going to get it to NBC. And somehow, we're going to get this thing renewed. Nobody else wants to make some sort of campaign. Why not? I can try. I'm going to try to get something going. We're gonna, if you guys want more details, just email me at toywithattitude at gmail.com. Once again, toywithattitude at gmail.com. Uh, let me know if you're interested in doing something like this. I want to get something going together. Just send in some video uh, to toywithattitude at gmail.com of why you want to see this renewed, what you love about the show, and how we can make this happen. I believe we can. Hashtag Save Heroes Reborn. Get it out there. Spread the word. Please, guys, we need to see this happen. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click your like and subscribe. And I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude. And keep riding, guys.